one. Let's go dancing, everybody. The 2023 March Madness Tournament is here, both for men's and women's, focusing on the men's today. We're talking all things Division I men, NCAA Men's College Basketball Tournament. Hell yeah. Let's say the cliche. This is March, and we have your best team to cover the entire tournament. 68 teams, or I should say 68 schools, are vying for a national championship in Houston for the Final Four. And let's do it. We have our crew, Hayden Nadler, Alex Ranelli, and Brandon Gutierrez here to start our coverage of this amazing tournament. What's up, gentlemen? Great to see everybody. Good. How are you guys doing? Good, good. Make it happen. Awesome. Yeah. Every, everybody looks different. Alex has a returning mustache. Hayden has a goatee. Brandon... <laughs> Red did just looks more handsome, and uh, I'm wearing a different hat this time. Um, but everybody had a good weekend. How would you think? How do we think about the conference championships this past weekend? We had some big upsets. Yes, yes, we did. Well, Penn won- State played its way into the tournament by that that big run they had in the the Big Ten tournament. Yeah, well, they played re- really well. If I had my chance, I would have. Shaking all the sense out of that entire uh, coaching staff for Penn State because that out of bounds approaches. <laughs> but yeah, a lot of a lot of exciting games the last weekend it made all the momentum going into uh, into Selection Sunday even better, and it was uh, really really fun to watch the show. Yeah, and I mean, honestly, I think the seeds came out pretty well this year. I'm pretty happy where they seeded most people. Yeah, yeah pretty. I think the seeding was pretty good this year. I yeah. What snub before we get into the tournament? What snubs did you guys notice, or what upset you? Whether it's oh, the Rutgers uh, or Clemson, Clemson should have been in. They beat NC State three times. They were three and zero in the head to head. I don't really get how you could uh, exclude them over uh, NC State. They also had, I believe, they had, a, I want to say they had five or six quad one wins. Clemson mm-hmm. and they yeah. didn't get into the tournament. That was absolutely shocking to me. That's the that was the one really big snub that I saw where I feel like they should have got in over um, NC State. That's what I, I was pretty it's, – it's pretty hard to say when a team goes 3-0 and over versus another team that they get – I didn't personally like that. I thought that was a bigger snub than Rutgers not getting in. Mm-hmm. I don't know. That, that was yeah, that was surprising to me with the Rutgers. Rutgers has usually always gotten in. Yeah, not even a first four. And, you know, we're not part of the selection committee, but it's uh, – it's just too bad, but it just shows the I only mean, way to guarantee is putting is putting to four win Mountain all. West teams in was a little bit peculiar when you put in Nevada and Boise State. Um, yeah. I I didn't like that, mm-hmm. but you know they did they did go five and ten versus the quad one teams and three and over NC State Clemson. So I was pretty surprised they didn't get in. Yeah, and I'm sure we'll discuss the seating as we go through each region. We have yeah. some interest, and we'll um, lead the conversation that way. But we dropped this on Tuesday. The first four starts this Tuesday. Then we have the round of 64 begin on Thursday. And we'll be back at it when the Sweet 16 previews in about a week and a half from today. So why don't we start our coverage? Let's help fill out your brackets. And let's have a lot of fun with this. And going into it, I think one thing that has sucked about the Carvis tournament, we had some teams with major injuries. UCLA has two of their big boys out. Houston has their best player injured. Um, it's nerve-wracking. This really can shift things around. And now I wonder, as we talk about our picks here, if it's all about who's going to be the healthiest right now. What what do you get? And we'll, um, as we go through each region, each team, that's – and we'll discuss those injuries, but what do you guys think about all the injuries this past weekend as well? I mean, yeah, it's, it was kind of crazy, but you're going to see which teams have more depth and which teams are more battle-tested when they have injuries. Um, I think that's going to be an interesting thing to see play out. Mm-hmm. Yeah, But I Definitely. think the teams with the most amount of depth will be able to survive those injuries because they're going well, yeah, to most... have a more complete roster. Exactly. Most of the teams that did get injuries have a uh, a big stretch on their bench, so they can definitely fill in. It won't be exactly the same, but they'll get close enough to their their final stage roster while those injuries are out. And it depends. Maybe they're out for the whole tournament. That's the whole question. If they're able to get them in before we get all the way to the final four and get those players back in, 
and healed. Some of them might even play injured still. We'll see. It's the biggest yeah. tournament. And I think you guys are leading up to the doorstep of what, what I think is more critical, which is I think this is going to be really a battle of coaching wills. I think you're going to see a lot of situational basketball change uh, deciding these games, um, not just the out of bounds, but, you know, second half adjustments and defensive schemes and whatnot. I think that's going to be more the signing, you know, goalpost for this uh, this tournament. All right. Let's get into it once and for all. Let's talk all things March Madness. We'll start with the South region. And we start with Alabama versus TAMU and C well or CC and Semo. Let's be real, Alabama will take care of that. Some matches we hear Maryland and West Virginia, San Diego State and Charleston, Virginia Furman, Creighton, North Carolina State, Ben Baylor, UCSB. Missouri and Utah State and Arizona and Princeton. From the bat, this is a very, very interesting region to start. And, Bray, looking at these matchups, why don't you guys first tell me, where do you see some upsets in the first round? For me, and and whether this is an upset based off of seeding or what at you, you know, the real thing now is to check the spreads on how much these teams are separated by. But off the bat, I think the college, the the college of Charleston has been a favor of so many people, and I think you can find a twelve beating a five seed, which is that cliche upset we like to see every year around. Those stick out for me. I actually think Furman can uh, make a push for Virginia. I've actually seen a few of their games. The team can score. The team's well disciplined and well coached. I think Furman's one team to watch out for, for instance. So those are a couple on my end. What are some other schools that you think uh, can at least make a Sweet 16 or break some brackets, if you will? Yeah, well, no, I, I, right. I was, sorry, no, I I, uh, I agree with you on the San Diego State Charleston, and uh, I think that's the most intriguing matchup of the tournament, actually, or one of the most because it's two really? major teams. Um, I like San Diego State out of the Midwest. That's actually going to be one of my teams, which I'm gonna. I may. I actually, I think they're loaded. I think they're. They're going to make a huge push. I actually may think they make may, they may even make the Final Four, San Diego State. Um, that's mm-hmm. a huge one. But the College of Charleston did go, I want to say, like 30, 32 and 3. Um, yeah. Their only three losses came to UNC. They lost one to Hofstra, and then they lost to Drexel, too. So they had a really, really good year. But, I mean, oftentimes, sometimes that's, those numbers are misleading because last year, I remember, everyone was picking – uh, South Dakota State last year to be Providence, and then they ended up losing in the first round to, to Providence. <laughs> so that was the big upset everyone picked was going to – I think they were favored versus Providence, actually, last year in last year's tournament in the, the 5-12, and Providence ended up winning that game. So, um, yeah. Or was it a 4-13? It was either a 4-13 or a 5-12, but that was the one upset everyone was picking. So I'm not going to get too trendy on those really great mid-major teams that won 30 games, but definitely something to look into. But – I don't know. I, I'm really confident in San Diego State this year. I think they're going to make a huge run. San Diego State out of the East region for – or the South region for Hayden. Interesting, interesting mm-hmm. stuff. What about the Brandon and Alex? Where do you see um some bracket busting from this uh, I see, side of the cord? If, if we're just talking opening round, I see Creighton uh, being highly overvalued against NC State. I think that's pretty much a push. Um, I think NC State, you know – Playing in the ACC, um, I, I think that they could they could probably take them pretty handily. But I gotta go. I gotta ride with the Furman bandwagon. I just was mm-hmm. not impressed and very disconcerted with what I saw with Virginia against Duke in the ACC tournament. Um, if you can't throw it in the ocean against you know a first year coach uh, for Tony Bennett against John Shire, I think that you guys you got to get those guys prepared and um, you got to be able to manufacture some offense in the tournament, especially when you get a mid major team where. You don't have a lot of high level quality tape on these on these guys. They could yes. throw and they're gonna be out there headhunting because you're the top dog in the first round and you're the underdog. So I think that Furman is the obvious um easy choice, but I would also add Creighton and NC State being a push where it seems to be a toss up to me. Do you think that would be a issue with a Furman's never made an NCAA tournament? This is their first ever one where it could be a lack of experience in the tournament versus Virginia who's battle tested and won a national championship? Do you think that could be a problem? No. But they've also lost to a 16 seed, which has never happened before. I think um I think Furman actually it plays to their advantage because there is such minimal tape on them at the highest stage. I think with Virginia, I think their inability to manufacture offense really diminishes their 
ability to, um, you know, do what they want to do on offense and really spread the ball around. Well, it depends. Virginia plays a very, like, they play a very defensive game. They're very sluggish a little bit. So I think yeah. if teams can learn how to defend, or if you get a team that can really shoot the ball, um, I think that could really be a disadvantage for them. So it really depends what the tempo they want to play. If Virginia can dictate the tempo of the game, I think they should win that game easily. But, I mean, it really depends how much Furman wants to push, press, or and shoot the ball right. from the three-point line. But I, I, I think I think that matchup actually favors Virginia. Yeah, I think so. I, exactly. I think it does. I think the experience of being in the tournament is going to favor Virginia and having that, that experience. So I think they're going to go on to a very confident. They know what they need to do and how they need to play to get out of that first round. Do you guys trust Tony Bennett? Yeah, I do. Yeah. 100%. All right. Uh, my, my key matchup is not really an upset, but more or less I think it's going to be very close is that Missouri versus Utah State. Just yes. because mm-hmm. they both uh, – Missouri has, what I think, like – six wins against the top 25 and I think uh it's just I think Utah is going to come in strong I think even though they didn't do too well against they only played two t- uh two teams in the top 25 so they really didn't have a chance to see how well they would do against those um yeah I I, I think it's, it's I think it's going to be a high scoring it's going to really come down to guard play defense from the both of them and definitely coaching as Alex said is going to be a pivotal point in that game to see uh what they can do um. Yeah. I mean. I. I think personally. I think. I think. Um. I think Missouri is going to win that game. But I mean, it's going to be close. But I. I have Missouri winning over Utah State. Yeah. Now talking about the top two, the one and two in this tournament, we have a very good Arizona team who made strides in the Pac-12 tournament, and of course we have Bama, though ranked number one in the country, um, or I should say, though ranked two in the country. One or two. Yeah, I don't have the top of my head. Does they anyone ranked, have that? They're ranked the two seed, the Arizona. Arizona yeah, two seed. Two. The and then um Houston's and then, number one. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So we have we still have our guy Brandon Miller still playing. This team out of the top this team is still very healthy now, the factors into it. Can do we see well first focusing on these two teams, do we see Alabama playing playing the true heel where I see their fans uh, making concerning T-shirts and really going into the bad guy. And after uh, Brandon Miller's two friends were indicted in this capital murder cha- murder murder story, and he's you know off the hook at the moment. But you know who knows yeah. what can happen if he's playing in the middle of the game. Are they going to say, "Hey, buddy, we have more evidence for you. You got to come with us"? I don't know. <laughs> Probably not likely. But regardless. If at the moment this story is behind Brandon Miller's back, can he focus now and bring a championship to Bama? Or is Arizona, who seems to have players who are not getting in trouble that we know of at least, and we know Arizona's has always been a factor in March Madness in the past decade, with the top two teams in this region, do we see them just pushing away these other 14 teams? Um, I mean, yeah, I mean, my, it's going to be hard. I think the, I think it's going to be, uh, Arizona versus San Diego state in the sweet 16, which, so it's going to be a tough matchup for that. But I mean, yeah, I, it's very difficult. Cause I actually think the two teams I was actually going to pick for the national championship would have been Arizona and San Diego state, but they actually are playing in the same region. So it's going to be a very tough decision for me. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I think it's definitely Alabama, Arizona. I think they take that region. I think San Diego might have a chance. I think it's just maybe I have a little too much faith in Virginia right now. Uh, but I just think that the experience they've had from previous years is, is what's going to carry them over to the uh, Sweet 16. Um, no one's but, talking about Baylor. Baylor's are pretty high. Well, I think uh, – They I just think won Baylor, a national championship Reese, a couple of years ago. They, or last year, actually. Or was it last yeah, year? Yeah, they won yeah, the last couple of years, years ago. ago. But this yeah. year – Baylor has been a little underwhelming for me. I think they a couple of their losses that should have been easy wins. Uh, really, kind of now I have them. I actually have them losing to to Creighton, in in the, in the round of thirty two. I think wow. that could be an upset. Hmm. Yeah, well, I'm not really as high on Creighton this year because I think the Big East was kind of down. I'm not really. As yeah, high I think. Uh, yeah, Cre- Green. I think we is a is a little bit of a buzz. I think coming out of last year, there was a lot of hype around that young roster. Then coming into this year and playing very well, and they just did not meet that standard. But 
I think Creighton does have some type of potential to upset Baylor in that sense. So you guys took the words out of my mouth because I actually had Baylor coming out of this region. Um, okay. I think, you know, when you guys talk about coaching and stuff and, and definitely, um, you know, having a little too much confidence in Tony Bennett, I feel the same way about Scott Drew. I think that Scott Drew is a tremendous coach. I think that him winning the championship definitely, you know, cemented him, you know, over the long term in terms of the Big 12 and how they can compete with teams like Texas and Kansas and whatnot. Um, so I think that that they have to be in terms of just the overall, you know, quality of wins and quality of competition and, you know, coaching prowess that they can go toe to toe with Alabama if they meet them there. And having said that, I would put my money on the fact that they would beat Arizona because um, I just don't know how to weigh the Pac-12 against, you know, the Big 12 and the Big 10. And I think that when a push comes to shove, I think Baylor just has a little bit more. I want to say a team from the from the West Coast and the Mountain Time hasn't won a national championship since 1998. It's a pretty interesting statistic. That's probably, been, yeah, yeah, yeah 25 years. Wow. I saw that statistic on ESPN. So that was an interesting yeah. one. <clears throat> yeah, and it's for- kind of crazy that – um. oh, sorry. No, keep that. going. It's kind of crazy that uh, Scott Drew, the coach for um, Baylor, may not even be the best coach in the family. His brother, Vice Drew, <laughs> just took Grand Canyon to the NCAA tournament twice. Yeah, that's right. That's he's, right. He's had three teams that went to the tournament from Vanderbilt, Valparaiso, and now G- GCU. So it's he's he's a he's a great coach. He might not be the best coach in the family, Scott Drew, and he's got a national <laughs> championship. Mm-hmm. You know, honestly, for me, I'm actually really liking Bama right now at this moment. I think they're one of the more complete teams. I think they're very fresh they really frustrate other schools on defense and they have big rim protectors as well and of course like i said brandon miller is the one you know we had those two big nba prospects that slip in my mind and it seems brandon miller is the one that's interesting and um even if they go on a heel run for a wrestling term i think that that team really has a push and um not to play spoiler for now but i was very gung-ho on ucla until their injuries and maybe this team could lead towards me changing my mind there. But as we go through each regions, we'll see yeah. what I mean by that. Do you think um do you think Brandon Miller could challenge for the number one pick, even though Webb and Yama? Webb and Yama is the guy who's pretty much the consensus number one. Yeah. And right now, but do you think Grant but you think Brandon Miller maybe uh, could challenge for that pick? I think the, the, the situation he's in right now is gonna really they're gonna kinda stray away from him for that nationally. And I think they're gonna they're just don't care because of how greedy we've seen with these players throughout <laughs> major sports. Now you're right on a moral standpoint, Brandon. They probably should and still wait this story <laughs> out. And from reading all these stories, and Brandon Miller's attorneys really think they have a case that Brandon is innocent, and they claim that there's evidence that shows to get him off the hook. Now I'm just going off these reports. I'm seeing both silly Twitter ones and legitimate uh, sources on legal networks. And as long as he isn't arrested, I think he's going to be fine. And people compare him to like a Kevin Durant type. And then, you know, plenty of teams in the NBA who could use a wing player like him. Maybe he could be the one to earn that first pick. Maybe, but if not a first pick, at least a draft lottery pick for sure. And to answer your question, Hayden, um, I think we need some of the heat to die off him. But by the time June rolls around, wouldn't be surprised if you see him in that number one pick. I, I really do. And especially hey, real, if they win the national championship. Real quick before we move on, I think his ceiling potential as a, as a draft pick and over the long term, I, he reminds me a lot like a like a prime early Paul George, late Indiana Paul days. George. Okay. He's got the same body. Yep. I agree. Yep. <laughs> yeah. All right. So All right. why don't we head over to the East region right now? Teams cl- – include a Purdue team who some people may have felt their stock, though a number one seed, I've heard that they could be quote unquote, the weakest one seed, you know, depending on who you ask. We have a Memphis team who I think um, (coughs) Memphis going up against Florida Atlantic as Florida Atlantic gets a well-deserved bid in this tournament, but Memphis uh, going wire to wire with Houston in the, AAC championship this weekend. That's a team to consider. Um, very interesting. We have Duke and all Roberts. Uh, Duke at number five again, but depending who you ask, some people think that's too low, some people think that's too high, but ultimately they are the ACC champions. Defeat, 
excuse me. Ultimately, they are the ACC champions. And with a first-year head coach, maybe they could keep the legacy going in a post-Coach K world. Going up against Oral Roberts, named after Ann Vincella. If I I say that right. Um, Anyways, uh, we have Tennessee and Louisiana. Tennessee has uh, impressed people, especially Alex Ranelio. We have Kentucky and Providence. Um, Providence fallen with the Big East to get where they were supposed to be. Too bad for them. And then Kentucky is Kentucky. And Kansas State and Montana people are very impressed with Kansas State. Michigan State for USC. I know Michigan State has had some tough losses in this entire season. But obviously amongst the tragedy that took place on the campus a couple months ago, do we see a Cinderella story there? And uh, for USC made a push in the Pac-12 as well. And then we have Marquette, the Big East winner, a team Alex against all in person. Can they go up against the uh, any the American East zone, Vermont, the only respectable school in that conference? So that breaks down our East region. Again, tell me some of the key matchups here that impress you guys. Um, I think the best matchup in this region is uh, Florida Atlantic versus, versus uh, Memphis. Florida Atlantic mm-hmm. won 30 games this year. Uh, Memphis is a team that people are really concerned about because they made it. They made around the 32 last year. Um, they had a big run last year, so I think uh, Memphis. Memphis could be a team that really could could make the Sweet 16. They they have a they have a lot of depth and they competed for Houston. They beat Houston this year, so um, that's the team I'd really look out for in the region as as a sleeper team to really make make a deep run. Memphis, yes, I do, and some people might even think that Florida Atlantic, even though they're in. One of these smaller conferences, maybe their seating's a little too low. I mean, yeah, those are two really, really good teams. So, I mean, it's hard to say. Yep. Um, my biggest key matchup in that would probably just because it would be the Kentucky Providence game. I think it's going to be close. What I think it's going to come down to is the coaches. Uh, for that, I think you know, as we said, Kentucky has been playing its usual self this year. It's kind of like in a in a transitional period to be rebuilding. And I think Providence, not the biggest fan of Providence, and I think Providence is a school that is sometimes overhyped. But uh, we got to give credit to their coach. Um, yeah, Ed Cooley's done a am- great job. Cooley's an amazing coach, and I think when it comes to tournament time, he knows what he needs to do to get his team to win. I think that oh. game's going to come down to a wire. But for some reason, I just think that Providence, the way they looked in the Big East tournament, wasn't great. And I think Kentucky is going to marginalize and win that game, win that match. I mean, I don't. it's just hard for me to say because all the success Calipari's had, he's only had one national championship in his entire career. I want to say he's lost, he's lost once at Memphis. He's made three, I believe. He lost. Memphis, he lost to Kansas in the national championship. And then he also made one and he lost to UConn with – with uh, with Kentucky, and that was when there was actually a post on came that came out that put him in the top fifteen best coaches of all time. I mean, yeah, he's but, an incredibly good coach, but the fact he's only got one national yeah, championship, one championship. Is, yeah. is is pretty like surprising to me because you know I would not think he with all this. You would think you would have success. more. Yeah, yeah. you think he has more. He has a great record, but that I mean, the best team he ever had was when they had Anthony Davis, Kid Gilchrist, and that great team, and they went like thirty eight. That year they went thirty eight one, and then they lost in the final four. So it's like. It's yeah. hard for me to, you know, it's hard for me to say. The guy's only had one national championship, you know? and and he yeah. hasn't even made. He hasn't. He's only made two two national championships with Kentucky. Yeah, so, you know, no, hundred percent. I mean, I was, yeah, I, I was feeling the same way about Cal Perry coming into this tournament. I think there's a ton of heat on his hot. He's got a huge hot seat. Um, I think just looking at like first round upsets and what we're kind of, um, you know tuning in on i mean whoever purdue gets they're going to be fine for a round they're going to be fine but i think they're the weakest one out of all all the top uh number one seeds i think that duke has a real chance of blowing it against oral roberts again you got a first year coach i understand he had an impressive run in the acc tourney but not a lot of tape on oral roberts they've had you know success in the past in the tournament um i think that they yeah, have their experience a- they went to sweet 16 a couple years ago yeah, exactly. And they, yeah. they, they, I think they could keep the close even, and it may be a push, even if they don't come out victorious. Um, I like K State to, to roll over Montana State. Um, yeah. But I think, I also, yeah, I, and, and, and I have full confidence in Tennessee, so I don't see really a whole lot of 
um, upsets out of sight, outside of Duke Nola Roberts. Um, and even that's a toss up for me, but um, I think the overwhelming, you know, favorite out of this conference, I mean, I'm, I'm sorry, out of this region is Marquette. Um, I think that I, you know, I was on record saying that there's very minimal discrepancy, very minimal gap between the top five seeds in the, uh, the Big East tournament, but what Shaka Smart has done with this program and bringing it back to, you know, the standards of the past, like in the Dwayne Wade years and whatnot, when Marquette was really the prime, the, you know, the cream of the crop, I think that their run has set the stage where they could, re- they're hot at the right time. They could really make it, um, make it far in this tournament. And especially if you're looking down the line to play Purdue, I think it's the best case scenario for them to overcome a number one seed. So I'm looking at, you know, obviously Marquette. Um, I think that, you know, uh, I think that Kansas State has a puncher's chance, and I think that um, even Memphis can make some damage. You know, they they can make it really hard for Purdue in the second round. Fun fact: Montana State actually lost to Quinnipiac this year, so that's my that's my. <laughs> where we actually got we have a win over NCAA tournament teams. There you go, seventy two to seven, and we beat Iona, so we have wins over two <laughs> NCAA tournament teams. Fun fact. There you go. Something might start over there in uh, mid middle in the middle of Connecticut's program. But for these other teams now, Purdue, do you take them seriously as number as a number one seed? I do actually. I do actually. I, do. I, I, th- I think they're gonna be. I think this is the like finally make the final four and break through. Yeah, they're making the final four. Two Eight. words: Zach Eady. That's all I gotta say. Mm-hmm. Game Hopefully. changer. I think they're gonna be pissed off after that loss to St. Peter's. They blew. A, they blew a good opportunity last year. I think yeah. they're gonna come in hungry this year. They feel like a, a, a number two seed masquerading as a one. I'm sorry. I, I, I just don't trust Matt Painter as a, as a, as a coach. I've, I've looked at his resume. It's just not impressive. And I understand that it's kind of his time to ascend, but I just don't have confidence that they're going to beat, you know, Marquette or, or any of these teams, you know, going into the, uh, and going into, well, the they game. don't, they don't have a good history in the tournament. They've, they've lost no. a lot of games. They, they probably should have won to be honest yeah. with you in the tournament. They lost, like I said, last year, they lost to um St. Peter's in the round. Of, in the even, let's even, let's even suppose that Tennessee makes it. Um, to the elite eight, I don't see them beating Tennessee either. Uh, yeah, they do. I, I, they got, do. I, I, I actually agree. With you that. Yeah, I mean, I he's Tennessee only going pretty far. But. He's been coaching Purdue since 2005, and he's only made the elite eight once. So it's like, you know, at the same time, he got to eventually win. He's made two. He's made four Sweet Sixteens. I think, and an elite eight. If he doesn't so. do it. This is his roster to do it. He had. He has the the players. He just. You know, like you know, the biggest thing is not. Oh yeah, uh, this is his best team, in my opinion. Yeah, best team. I agree, I agree with you on that. And I think uh, the big thing you got to come to question is he might not be, because uh, you know, a conversation I always have is there's two different types of head coaches. There's your head coach that uh, you got like Shaka Smart, who is really good at the X's and O's on the court and actually setting up defense, setting up offense. And yep. then, uh, you know, a lot of people compare – are not fans of the UConn coach. And it's oh, because I, I feel Hurley. like – Oh, my God. I Hurley, because he is Crazy not, stories about him. Oh he's not He's not an X's and O's coach, I think. He's, he's, For that team, he's not. He's, he's, he's a word I can't about, say in this podcast. He is a coach that, that creates a great atmosphere around the team in a, in a hardworking program that helps bring in top recruits and it puts him in the right path to be successful. So I think, yes, in a sense of you do have a point, Alex, with the coaching for Purdue, that he might not be an X's and O's coach, but I think his players are good enough to get him to the Elite Eight. And I, and yeah. I believe in Zach oh, Eady. That's the yeah, no, I, I agree with um Alex on this one. I, I, I don't see them getting past either. Uh, I don't see them getting past either Tennessee or um or Marquette. I don't. Those two I'm teams. Saying- I'm saying that the game against Tennessee is a push for me, but I still think that Rick Barnes as a coach prevails over Matt Painter as a coach. And I look at situational basketball in tight games like that, where the margin of error is so small. And yeah. I just, I'm, I'm very, I'm very disheartened what I saw with the Penn state game. I understand it's the top of the top of the class with the big 10, but you gotta, you gotta close that out. And you can't even get that game close. I mean, I, I, I turned off the game. It was like 50, it was like 17 point lead. They scored like ten points in like the final minute, right, or something yeah, like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I heard about that. It seems like they know how to blow games and keep things close when they should be putting people away. Mm-hmm. All right, good stuff. What do there. you guys think of Kansas State? You think they're a little bit seated a little high? I thought they were seated a little bit high at three. The, 
I don't know. Yeah, about that. Yes, I, I don't uh, agree with three. I thought they were a little I definitely bit high think the they're going to make a little bit of a run. They've been playing pretty well, surprisingly. I've ne- I've never been a big person of watching Kansas State, but yeah. ever since uh, like the mid season, you know, mid season of the con- their conference, I've I've kind of watched a couple games. They are definitely strong. It can it can make a little bit of a run here. I yeah, think they'll give Marquette a little bit of a fight, but in the end, I think Marquette takes that. I think yeah, Marquette. I think Marquette. Is just- I like Marquette this year too. It's really good. Well, it's really good, even though we UConn lost to them uh, by two points. Just want to yeah. say that oh, we don't we don't we don't talk about UConn here. UConn says yeah, we don't like oh, UConn. The thing with, oh, oh, fun with that. Sorry, I don't like them. I'm just being honest with you. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we'll when get you, into look, that once we hit their region. But also, I think it. Yeah. Oh no! Uh, the last thing, just the last thing before we move on with K State, I think that there's a lot of Big Twelve cannibalism that goes on through the regular season. I think they get kind of pushed and tampered down, you know, under the radar in the public media. So I think that, like you guys said, to your credit, I think that they have a real chance to make some noise in the tournament. Um, I think it'll just be halted with Marquette Elite Eight. I, think I mean, if you're going to go off coach of the year, you got to give that coach Jerome Tang, like the coach of the year. Yeah. I, I think Jerome Tang is coach of the year. Like that's, I okay. think he's from Kansas State. I think he's done an awesome job there. And also the thing right. everyone talks about Kansas State, just so, as long as they don't turn all, turn over the ball as well. I mean, we'll see. If I'm just going off the regular season, I think he's the coach of the year, actually. I'm yeah. not I'm not talking about the tournament. I think he did the best yeah. job out of any team. Okay. Yeah. All right. That's, that makes yeah. sense. I also think Kansas State, like, they have an easy first-round match. They're going against Montana State with the 14th right. seed, and I don't think Montana State even has a, uh, even a chance in that match. <laughs> yeah, I, I think I think they're going to take that match up pretty. But, hey, it's you like, never know. Montana – Montana State did win 25 games, so it's not like they're playing like a team that won like 18 or 19. So it's like, you know, I, I don't I don't love the confidence Montana State plays in. Like I said, they lost some games maybe they shouldn't have, but, you know, you can't you, – I mean, they play in the big sky, which isn't exactly a great mid-major. So yeah, it's, it's, not, really, it's not a really – It's hard to really team. evaluate them, to be honest. Yeah, I give, I'll give you that, yeah. Now moving on to the Midwest Conference – a conference that includes Houston, huge favorite in this tournament, going against Northern Kentucky, Iowa, and Auburn. <clears throat> Auburn has made some big, have made some impressive team victories, kept teams close and into it in the SEC, and Iowa making their strides. We have Miami, Florida specifically. We have the U, a very destructive team from South Beach, is out there. Um, and also Drake, another mid-major team that some people feel that they can sneak in and get some impressive wins. Then we have Indiana and Kent State, Iowa State and Mississippi. Iowa State people have criticized on this show and all over the country. See how seriously they can be. Xavier, after making a push of the Big East, had um, fallen, but people think, hey, watch out for them. Texas A&M and Penn State. Texas and Colgate. So another region with some very impressive schools. And where are we going with these matchups here, gentlemen? I think one thing to watch out is Drake, a mid-major team. For one thing, that stays off the board. I think they have put teams close. I think they're ones who can go up against some of these powerhouse schools. And Miami's going to be a very, very hard team to beat. But I think they might have the biggest hill to climb in terms of the first round with their seeding separation. And I think they can ultimately win it, even if it's just by a buzzer beater. That's one matchup that really sticks out from the start for me. What are some other ones, guys, for you? Um, I mean, I, I like I like Houston to get out of this region. I think I think they're by far the best team. I, mm-hmm. I, I, I even love even with their in, even with yes. injuries. Yes, I, I love Houston this year. Yes. That that's that's the team I'm gonna pick. Um the only the thing matchup, I the only sorry, no, I'll yeah. let you continue. Uh, the old, let me fi- you finish your point before I ask a question. There. No, no, you can go. You can go. Actually, I was gonna say some people think their scoring could be um, affected without their star player. Do you think there's any truth to that, or they could come as a team to overcome that? And I think does he good want enough. to play with a hurt? Jo- hurt I think point? they're. I think they're good enough as a team to play, and I think he's. Got, I think he'll play through the pain. Actually, I do. Mm-hmm. Um, the That's one what most players do. The one play. The one like I don't know. I mean. I actually think Penn State's going to be Texas A&M. Um, I do. I, I'm not a huge. I'm not a huge big. I'm not a I big agree. A&M fan this year. Um, I think. To, I think Penn State's coming off some momentum with their new head coach, Michael Shrewsbury. Um, they. I think they'll probably win that matchup. Um, I'm not. I'm not. I don't know. I'm not a huge fan of Drake as you are. Uh, 
I I don't love Drake this year. That's so many honest. hits. Um, I don't know. I, I actually think like Bradley was actually a better team in the Missouri Valley this year than than uh than Drake was. So I didn't. I don't exactly love Drake to be honest. I think they're a little bit. I just mm-hmm. they didn't even win the conference this year, so I don't know. I mean, it's it's hard for me to say that they're the best mid major team, and that Missouri Valley is usually a good conference. They've had. You know, teams make it pretty far in the tournament. Murray State's usually pretty good. They had John Morant when he was playing for Murray State. But no, I'm not I'm not a huge not in Drake. Strip clubs. I'm yeah, not sure. I'm not I'm not a huge Drake fan this year. I think Miami's gonna win that game pretty handily, actually. Okay. I'm actually I'm I'm with you. Uh I think my I think Miami's losing that game. I think Drake is gonna make the upset. Yeah. I, that's that's the one five twelve matchup I actually don't like. I actually think yeah. Miami's gonna win that game. I, but... I don't really I don't love Drake to be honest. Uh, yeah, you know, Drake is not a, a super impressive team, but just, you know, I just feel like there's always that one team that they might not look great in conference play and in and in their conference tournament, but somehow turn it around last minute in the March Madness and they end up winning and they get through to the round of 32. I think I think Drake can do it. But to me, I think the bigger matchup is that Iowa versus Auburn game because like you were talking about earlier, Auburn's looking very well. I was uh, – a really good team, and I just I think that eight nine scene separation like being so small, I think it's going to be a close match. But I do think Iowa takes it. Oh, uh, I have a, I actually have Auburn in that game. Actually, you do. I, yeah, I, I don't. I don't doubt Auburn, you. Right. That that, that was probably the biggest game that I sat and contemplated for a while. I just I I I, I don't. Auburn is really strong right now, and I just I don't know. I have something with Iowa. I think they can take it. I mean, the Indiana Kent State game, like I think Kent State's actually overseeded this year. Um, I think a thirteen seems actually kind of high. I would have put them at a fourteen or fifteen. Actually, even though they're coming from the MAC, which is like it's a it's a pretty decent mid major conference, but I don't know. I, I like Indiana in that game by a pretty yeah. sizable margin. I'm not a huge. I don't. I didn't like. Uh, I didn't like Kent State seeding. I I actually would have. Um, I'm looking at the other. Would seed. you sw- Would you have switched it with Colgate? 15? Uh. Yeah, I probably would have switched to Colgate. I think Colt- Colgate should have been a thirteen, and uh, okay. And I think I think actually, um, yeah, I think Colgate should be playing Texas, and Kent State should be playing Colgate. That, that, I mean, Col- I mean, uh, Colgate should be playing Indiana, and uh, Kent State should be playing Texas. Yep. Yeah, I get you. But like, people yeah, are I, gonna I don't say, disagree with that. People are going to say Colgate's from the Patriot League, which is a much you know weaker conference than the it's Mac. It's a weaker conference, yeah. Yeah, by by a mile. Yeah, I agree with you. The Patriot League is one of like the weakest mid majors conferences in in America. But like, also Colgate's won the conference three years in a row, so it's like you know. Well, it's what, what, you have to what, give credit where it's due. Yeah, it won, it won the uh, dental competition. I I think yeah uh, they <laughs> they beat the they beat Crest also the Crest basketball team. Yeah, yeah, they, Crest, they're not very good. Crest is a jerk, man. Yeah. But um, no, I mean, I, if if we're looking like you know competition uh, heading into Houston because they have to be the odds on the Midwest region. I I do love Indiana. I expect Trace Jackson Davis to just jump off the TV. I think he's magnificent. I love their coach roster, coaching roster behind Mike Woodson as well. Um, I expect them to you know meet Houston down the line and give them a push. Um, but if we're if we're talking you know um, who's coming out of this region, I love Texas. I think what they did, you know, and put on display against Kansas was absolute sheer dominance. And the more I look at Rodney Terry and what he's done with this organization, I just think that he's got to be my pick for coach of the year because you look at Big 12 cannibalism and all these teams taking a bite out of each other and just, you know, playing hard-nosed basketball. I thought this was the best conference in the country. I thought that he did an exceptional job riding the tide and correcting where they need to course correct during the middle of the season. Um, you got a lot of, you know, big egos and seniors on that roster. I think that he's done a really phenomenal job with this team, and I expect them to overthrow Houston before, well before um, well before the Final Four, if not Indiana, to be honest. Really? You think you wow. think he did a better job than Jerome Tang at Kansas State and um, I, and, and I do, Smart? Because, because apples to apples, they're both in the same conference, and I think that he's done a phenomenal job taking over the keys to this this team. I think that he's done an, um, uh, an exceptional job. When you look at the big games like Baylor, Kansas, um, I think that he was able to situationally really tighten up the screws and, um, you know, hold accountable a lot of the seniors on this team. Yeah, I mean, yeah, definitely. What about Iowa State, a team that has been criticized throughout, a team that when we talked about them making the top 16 from the 
from the uh, committee's picks. They did get in. They did slip in. But um, some people feel that maybe this might not be a good scenario for them. And even the playing tournament, whether it's Mississippi State or Pittsburgh, can actually defeat them. Question. I have which... Iowa State going all the way to the Elite Eight, going against Houston. <coughs> no. Question. That's with, my sleeper. With, with Texas, do you think it's oh. the, the Chris Beard thing is going to be a – do you think it's going to be a distraction for them that they have an interim coach? Like they're 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 coaching with an interim coach, Texas, aren't they? Yeah, no, didn't they make a no? Yeah, they are. Made, I think it is. Oh, they made coach. they made him the official. I coach. think they uh, made. I think they made. Oh, him they the made, they made Rodney Terry the official coach. I I thought I saw something. I think yesterday. I'll confirm it. that in one second. Because he's, he's, saying... he's, he's named the he was um. You know, yeah, something happened with their main coach, and then I yeah, saw Chris, that. Yeah, Chris, do you think that's a problem that they they technically are not with their full time? It, could, it could be definitely. You know, that's always a, a factor in that. I just, like, I, I actually think that's a big problem for Texas. Like, they don't really have the they haven't the, had a the coach that's got the full was year. Was this so. one that's the one true. with the domestic violence issues? Yes, so yes, 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 Beard, yes, yeah. yeah, yeah. And then he went to Ole Miss anyways after they yeah. ousted their they dismi- coach. They they dismissed the charges. So. Hmm. Well, like I don't know. I think that could be a factor, but like you saw also last year that. You know, Hubert Davis, you know, yeah, Hubert Davis. Uh, he he just led the uh UNC to, to the national championship last year. He was in it, he was technically in it, or it was his first year, so you never know. Yeah, yeah you never know. That's the thing, they're not I in the think... tournament at all this year. No, they yeah, didn't I, and they're I, too good for the really, NIT. Yeah, they they didn't deserve to be in the tournament this year, they had a very Underwhelming season. I don't. I don't know that what happened. And they that started number all. one. Weren't they ranked number one? Yeah, yeah they were the yeah, first well, preseason yeah. number one to ever m- not make the tournament ever. Exactly. Yeah. They, that I knew something was wrong after watching that first week of their season. They played absolutely, mm-hmm. completely different than what they played last year. And I don't. I don't know what happened. If it, if the players just got overconfident and and lacked you know structure. But they just – they fell apart really, really easy early in the in the season. What do we think, think also about Xavier coming out of this region? Uh, what? I don't think they go that far. I think Xavier is, was a okay team in the in the Big East, but as you saw, if they – any time Xavier went against any of the bigger Titans in the Big East, they got shut down against, like, Marquette. I mean – Did they uh, lose to DePaul, too, this year? Who was – Yeah, they lost to DePaul. The Big East? Yes, yeah. this is – I'll talk about it's like just, they, they're very they inconsistent. That's their problem. They haven't made this guy Rodney Terry the full time coach, and like he he only had like three tournament appearances at UTEP. Like he doesn't have an overly great resume. So like, do you think maybe they're gonna try to get like a big name, even if even if he leads them to a big run? They're gonna try to look for a new coach. Uh, you talking Texas? Yeah. Uh, yeah, you you might you think about it. Like I you think know, that's a always of big an option because like if you think about it, there a lot of coaches coming out of next year. There a lot of coaches are getting fired. Like uh, Rick Pitino, I, I mean, I'm not saying it's gonna happen, but imagine Rick Pitino. I mean, because he's probably gonna stay in. There's, the East there's Coast gonna be at least like I think three but or four open or, or Georgetown, but like imagine. Yeah, Rick that Pitino to me the Georgetown thing was crazy, but then I understand too. It's been you know like oh Patrick four was terrible. He was terrible, Patrick. They need to they need to make it. A, they need to. Make it's change. been four seasons. I just think that it, it takes a long time, you know. But then you put it you put it up against you know you, you put it against someone like Shaka Smart. Came in and no, and no, they, they have to move on. And it's they like, holy shit, we'll, you, you we'll talk more about that. Case. We'll talk more about yeah. that when we get to the Iona region, yeah. when, the, when the, which is next, the next region. We'll uh, talk but about. yeah, I, I think Xavier makes it to the second round, but I think Iowa State takes them out. Well, two okay, so two things I think that you guys are right that if we're looking just at Xavier in the first round, I, I mean, I, I think I think their ceiling is is around a 32. I don't think they can make it past. I think that there's they're kind of a combo. Really? I have them. I have them going to Sweet Sixteen. You don't think they could be Iowa State or the the winner of the plan? Well, okay. So here's the deal. Yeah. So if Iowa State ends up coming out of that first round, which I is difficult for me to say, I I think that they could they could beat out Iowa State. But the, the, this this time of the year, it's all about momentum, and I think that Iowa State is trending downward, and Xavier is tre- is trending upward. Um. So, yeah. I mean, look, I I. I it, it, for me, it's more just about a commentary about Iowa State. I just think that they're trending downward. They've lost like seven of ten to close out the year. I I, I don't have any faith that they're going to real make a real deep run. Um, particularly when you look at the bottom of this bracket, I think they whether it's you know A and M, Xavier, or Texas it doesn't matter to me. I think that they're they're still they're still sunken. You're not any bit concerned with Texas with that matchup with uh, Penn State and the the two seven matchup. I actually think that could be an interesting matchup because Penn State's looking pretty good. I mean. 
both those teams, Penn State and, and Texas A&M, look look pretty decent in their, their tournament. I will put it. I will put it here right now. I will say that Texas is the biggest lock out of this region to make it to the Final Four. Okay. okay. So you have to, okay. That's your big lock. I I had Houston as my one like really big lock. Yeah, team, Houston. Houston's my big lock. Houston's yeah, my big lock. But number, like yeah. if I'm if I'm looking at like the one region, but I mean if okay. I, I don't I don't think Texas is gonna I think Texas probably a Sweet Sixteen or Elite Eight but I think Texas could have some problems. But let, but let me but let me clarify like I'm just saying that I have the most faith and confidence in their respective region than I do of a top seed of any other region just currently. Okay. I that's think cool. the weakest region is is one Houston's in. I think that's that's the weak in my opinion the weakest region in the, in the uh in the tournament right now. I could agree with that. I, I think it's the easiest reason for Houston. Houston has an easy ride all the way to the Final Four. I don't think there's not a, a team that's really going to give them problems. Well, I think, if I think you look the, at it, and if you look at the end of these regions, the top two teams, top three, if you want to expand expand to that, I think they all have weaknesses and opportunities. This time of the year, it's about momentum and who's trending upward. And I think that when, like you guys said, when you look at the Midwest region, you know it may not be Houston, but it could be Indiana, it could be Texas A and M, it could be Penn State. Like I just think there's a lot more hot teams in that region amongst the other four. Personally. Yeah, and I mean Indiana's a trendy pick to, to to make a deep run. I love Indiana. Yeah. And and I think that one thing that showed there's so many schools throughout all these regions that can win. Yeah, we do have our favorites in it, but it really is wide open this year, and nothing beats a wide open March Madness tournament. So with that, let's go to our final region, the West region which includes Kansas and Howard. Kansas won the big dance last year, but it's really, really hard to repeat as champions. But can they do it again? We have Illinois and Arkansas, St. Mary's and and VCU. The UConn-Iona matchup is a a very fun one, especially seeing what can happen. Could UConn knock out Iona and knock out um, Rick Pitino? He gets one more chance to uh, add it all. Or maybe he could win his third national championship with a different school. Then we also have TCU and Arizona State and Nevada. I think that one's to watch out for. Gonzaga is back, but, you know, Mark Few knows how to uh, blow it. But can he blow it early against a Grand Canyon team who's made some noise this season as well? Then we have Northwestern and Boise State and UCLA and UNC Asheville. And UCLA, very gung-ho, I was. But, um... As I said, net their injury issues now. I don't know what can happen there. But tell me about the uh, matchups coming into it. And um, we'll actually we'll start with the UConn and Iona one with huge UConn representation here. Yeah. And one UConn oh, I hope, opposition I, here. I hope I hope I want to be too. Oh, my God. I cannot. I, I cannot. They're not losing. They're not losing. I don't know about that, man. I don't know. Iona. I've we're, seen a lot of Iona games. That they're pretty good. I mean, I mean, we beat them. We beat them once this year. But I mean, Iona's I, I good. But I'm pretty good. good. I think you, you don't think they're gonna play for uh, Patino in his last year because Patino's they're gonna try. I think they're definitely gonna try. But I think that we just we have so much. I think uh, we've gotten out of our 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 funk that we were in mid season where we had that uh, little short uh, schedule of games where we were on the losing streak. I think we kind of got it, you know, kind of regrouped. I think we know what we need to do. We're, we're playing correct basketball. You know, I think I have a little bit more faith in our guards now. And, uh, I, I just think that, you know, having Sono having the Sonogo Klingon combination is really going to be something that's going to be hard to, uh, to beat. I mean, I think you guys have a better chance of being Iona this year because the, the um the Mac was pretty bad this year actually from from a Quinnipiac basketball fan and the 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 comp the comp stuff was not good like this is the the first year where I can honestly say like the Mac is is pretty weak but I mean last year you did have a team in St Peter's make the lead it all the way from our conference so <laughs> something to look at there yeah. they're very battle tested in that they played a lot of teams in the in the Northeast and UConn's a team in the Mid Atlantic and the Northeast so it's I'm just... kind of a similar it's a similar style of basketball they play and Rick Pitino is gonna be probably employ his full out press from his days of Providence and and UMass with a Rick Patino coach team versus versus uh versus Hurley. It's probably one of the best coaching matches of all time because it's two guys who are kind of small undersized guards kind of with a chip on their shoulder coach co- coaching their respective teams. Yeah. Uh, Rick Patino's playing for a job at St. John's. I think he's gonna get hired at St. John's. That's what they think. But I mean he's still he's still a candidate for Georgetown as well. So I think he's gonna they're gonna be coming in with some momentum. I would take I'm gonna take UConn to win this game. 
I think they'll win this game by like I, I think they're gonna win this game like seventy two to like sixty five. It's gonna be a very close game, but I, I think I it's gonna keep it close all, all through all throughout. I don't doubt that could be an option because we always have a problem closing out. That's one of our weakest things. Our second half play, like after like the like eight minute mark for some reason we just lose it sometimes. Well they get they get clammy, they get like too conservative on offense and they kinda of pack it in because when yeah. I was at MP last week, they were up twenty one on Providence and then it started like narrowing, narrowing the gap until like five minutes remain, and then you started hearing that split crowd in the stadium. I think there's two critical points um worth mentioning here with UConn. Um, I think that the first round exit last year against New Mexico really bothers Dan Hurley. I think he's gonna be kind of in a retributional mindset going into this game, particularly because he knows that the lights are on him as a coach going across court against Rick Pitino. Um, I also think that there is a huge tremendous advantage, which is that we have two guys that are right around seven feet. I don't think that they've played the Twin Towers more than five minutes in, in multiple games consecutively this entire year. I think that you may see them try a few things in the first half to get Iona in foul trouble, dictate pace, and really control the, uh, the, 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 uh, the time possession of this game early where they can really put a commanding, you know, kind of force on it. So I think that if UConn does that, I think they could really blow this thing open early on. But the, all the spotlights are going to be on Dan Hurley in this game. I mean, Dan yeah. Hurley is coming off. They've had a lot of disappointment in the tournament, uh, Dan, UConn. I, I, they've lost in the round of 64 twice with him as coach. So this is kind of a prove-it year for him. Last year they lost as a five seed to New Mexico. And I think I want to say they lost to Maryland as a – I want to say they lost as like a seven seed to oh, Maryland. Yeah. Yeah, Maryland. Yeah, yeah Maryland, really, Maryland. Yep. They haven't. They haven't had a national championship in like ten years. I I think that's a school no, no, that's no. been trying. That's been trying. Uh, twenty fourteen. I they think won the national championship nine years ago, right? Yeah. Uh, twenty four. Is it twenty? Yeah, twenty fourteen. Yeah. So yeah. they, in my opinion, that's a school that's kind of been trying to cling to relevance for a while and really has no, 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 no. We got relevance still. Relevant still. <laughs> but like, you're telling me we're not, we're still not relevant starting the season off going 14 and 0 and being the second best team in the country. Listen, you got to yeah. do something now. Like this is their time. I mean, I keep hearing all we the will, we will. kinds of year I, until they prove it. Like I, relevant. I will take them to beat Iona. I will. I will Dude, take them uh, to beat Iona. That, that yeah. I'm not, I'm not going to be that foolish, but yeah. The relevance is a broad brush to paint with. We're like a top 20 team every year, man. Yeah. I mean, hey, this is the first year where they were really like, they, they were pretty good this year, but... Uh, oh, he's, they he's been, they haven't been, elite, they haven't been elite in a now. while. I'm sorry. They haven't been elite in a while. They've been they've well, been yeah, because, all right, I think we haven't been elite in a while because I think we you know we had coaching problems. So let's, let's get to the, the point of it. when... Uh, uh, oh, Kevin I Ali. forget his name. Kevin Ali was the coach. You know, he was like one of the worst scout coaches in the Stop. freaking NCAA basketball. <laughs> couldn't yeah. Couldn't recruit anyone... I what, mean, what it, do nothing. It, it's just kind of sad. Like, you guys have had all these, like, you guys have had Rip, Rip Hamilton, like, Ray Allen. Oh, I know. Like, Okafor. You haven't really had that, like, one really Gordon. great prospect. Next year. Next year. I mean, Kemba Walker, yeah, you guys got Drummond, too. So, Next so year, we'll have that player. Prospect. Rudy Gay played for you guys, too. So. Yeah, Rudy Gay. Well, uh, uh, yeah, Michael Okafor. Yeah, there's a, tons of names. Tons of big names. Yeah. That came out Garden, ben Gordon, Rudy Gay, Charlie B. Yeah, they had a lot of good players. So it's like I, I don't know. I, I think UConn has kind of lost some of its allure, and they got to get some of it back this tournament. So we'll see. Yep. I, I you're gonna go you're gonna go nuts, but I have them going all the way to the final four this year. A lot of people yeah. do. It's it's that popular <laughs> pick. I mean, they can do it. They have the scoring potential. You know, it, it really comes down to you know you know, and honestly, it's sad to say this. It comes down to how Sonogo plays. If Sonogo plays at his peak potential, I think we'll, we'll play great. I think, uh, you know, we just have too many pieces on the floor that you have to watch out for. Well, I mean, and, you know, that, we're, we're that, shooting three I, pretty well this I year. I think you guys will get to the Sweet 16. I actually do. The, I, the, UConn will get to the Sweet 16 this year, but oh, I don't so. know about that. I I don't love that St. Mary's VCU matchup. I don't. A lot of people are – I thought St. Mary's was seeded a little bit high. I mean, and I thought VCU was probably – I think both teams were seeded – like I think, yeah, no, VCU is definitely like more of like a fourteen seed. Yeah, I, 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 I didn't say. love the fact that VCU was twelve, and I didn't love. I think St. Mary's seed a little hot too. Like I think they're more of a six or seven. So it's no. like, it's it's a tough matchup for me. I'm I'm gonna take, I'm gonna take St. Mary's in that game. So I'll say that's St. a close Mary's game. Yeah, see, that see that could be an upset game. I have St. Mary's really, taking it too. I don't really know. I hear a lot of people picking VCU because they won the tournament out of the Atlantic Ten. Um, well, yeah, the Atlantic but, Ten. You yeah, know. it's just also because VCU, for some reason, always in the tournament has a little bit of a 
you know, some fire that they when they come into it. But yeah, I think. I don't know, but I feel, I feel just... like I feel like UConn will get to the Sweet Sixteen. I have them yeah. losing in Sweet Sixteen, but that's you know. Well, St. Mary's is a tough matchup because I watched them all year, even though they're in the West Coast Conference. I thought that they were better than Gonzaga majority of the year. Um, so I think that's going to be a tough. That's going to be a tough second round matchup. But um, if anybody can do it, it's UConn. I just I have more faith, you know, kind of like Brandon does about them making it. I mean, the one thing I will say about both teams is that. I mean, at the end of the games, they're, they're both not really great foul shooting teams. They're shooting; they're both shooting at about sixty nine percent. Yeah, St. Mary's. We've, we've and, had that problem all year. Yeah, yeah, they're, they're they're not a great foul shooting team, so it's kind of hard for me to say who I think is going to win this game. I, I, I'll probably take St. Mary's in a like I'll take them like seventy five to like. I think they're going to win that game seventy five to like sixty eight. St. Mary's over VCU. I think I they have know. a little bit more firepower than VCU. Yeah. Just um, just quickly switching gears too. I I. I think that if we have to pick a real stark um, upset here, I think that uh, I'm looking at Boise State Northwestern. I think that one's a real toss up. What do you guys think? Yeah, I'm I'm with I, you on that. I, I, I think, think I, honestly, I have a little bit of faith in Northwestern. I think they're gonna, uh, uh I think they're gonna make they're gonna they they can make a run to the Sweet Sixteen. I think they can. I Here's think. The one. Uh, Part of okay. a very strong conference Northwestern is those Wildcats and uh, I'm gonna yeah, give I, you yeah. I'm gonna give you the one three seed that I think is a little on upset alert. Uh, Gonzaga of GCU. I think Grand yeah, Canyon. Honestly, I think yeah, Gonzaga I think gonna make a, yeah, make a run at Gonzaga. Honestly, let's think about Gonzaga. Gonzaga, their coach is not that great, and two, they're they're literally their team is literally centered around their their senior Timmy. If if you shut down Timmy, they have a hard time restructuring and, and refining their offense. So yeah. if any team really does any kind of scouting and, and pre- preparation, if you the, shut if down Timmy, two, they're going to have a hard time winning the game. If there's two matchups in the three, I think Xavier versus Kenny Saw State, and I would say uh, Gonzaga versus GC are, are the two three seeds. I, don't, I, I think. honestly think Gonzaga doesn't deserve the three seed at that point. They, they didn't really play crazy. They did good in conference, but they're not as good as they seem. No, I they're think not. Another, Their conference they're, isn't that good either. Yeah, exactly. Like they're another Providence. They're like hidden. They have a lot of hype around them, but they're not as good as their the coach can't win. The few can't win the big one. Yeah, exactly. no, but few few has recently they've they've had some good runs. Mark, well, yeah, I mean, good runs, but they had some ugly losses, and I feel like this could be one. Maybe. I mean, it's interesting. I I think the Zag is a team that could go out in the first round, but I also think they're a team that could win the region. So they well, have they could, I, definitely. If I have Taco Bell, I have great runs too. But you know, it doesn't matter. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Gonzaga is just one of those teams that like they're they're a program that's known, but like uh, I they're they are clinging to relevance at this point. Yeah, that is that's what I would say. Sure. Yeah. And you know, one thing about this with with all of the various podcasts, radio shows, TV shows that cover this, we all know that, and we won't see some major upset coming that totally takes away any of our deep analysis and thoughts. You know, since the dawn of time with the March Madness and, you know, whether it's UMBC beating Virginia, I would re- genuinely like to find some clip of someone saying this is going to happen. And the only people mm-hmm. who bet that are people who hedge bets. But regardless, though, there are just a lot of fun matches with this one, too. And how about my uh, Bruins, as I talked about being a big fan of them? And, you know, I'll I'll be on the one who says with the team that was so complete, so well coached and now – um weren't able to win the Pac-12, and then, you know, I said their players got hurt. You know, this this could just be another instance of that program. Maybe there's a little curse with the last few years with them. I think that they look good in conference play, UCI. Like I mentioned before, they had a pretty good conference run. You know, they, they were the top team. But I just – I think they're not really good against top programs in the country. And I mm-hmm. – for some reason, I just think that – they're gonna fall short. I I honestly think that Northwestern can beat them in the second round, and and it doesn't help that they also had those injuries. Now it really comes down to do they do those players come out and play with their injuries, or they bench them for the first few rounds to see if they can you know make it without them and have them ready for like the Sweet Sixteen the round in, in the uh, round of eight. But uh, yeah, I don't have super a lot of faith in UCLA. Okay. I uh, yeah, no, I'm I'm not a, I'm not a huge big UCLA guy. I think I think they'll get to the Sweet Sixteen this year. I just I don't know about. I think their run's gonna end after that. And how about Kansas, number one, Brad, number one, and as I mentioned, very hard to repeat as champions in this tournament. In particular. Right. I I think Kansas will make the Elite Eight. 
But I'm I'm listen, I'm being honest with you here. Watch out for Howard in that round. Like their the HBCUs Howard. have actually done. They actually. I'm not saying that Howard's going to beat them. I'm not implying that. But I also <laughs> am saying the HBCUs have historically have upset teams in the in the past. Uh, Norfolk State and uh, Norfolk Northwark State has won a couple of games in March Madness. Um, mm-hmm. so yes, it's um the HBCUs have actually done pretty well in the tournament. Um, so it's it's something to look out for. If if there's one if there's one one seed to be on a little bit of upset alert, I would say it would be Kansas. Okay, I think can actually how they were saying about Purdue being the weakest one seed. I think Kansas is the weakest one seed in my opinion. Ooh, why is that? Like, I think that you know, even though they came off the win last year, for some reason, uh, they just they look good. I just I I haven't found the belief in them. I think that they 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 I definitely think they're gonna make it far because you know they might get upset by Howard, but I think that they'll lose to UConn in the is. Sweet Sixteen. And I'm I'm gonna be honest with you here, it would be abs- I, I'd be absolutely shocked. If they, if they lost, and uh, like, in Illinois, I, it's not an easy oh, team right. to beat either. If they, if they no. lost to to fucking um Kansas, I would. If they beat Kansas, I would be, I, I would fall out of my chair. Like I, I'm just being, I, it's never gonna yeah. happen. But, but that being said, like the HBCUs have, like North Forest State beat Missouri as a 15, Florida A&M, um, I mean Hampton beat Iowa State as a, as a 15. So I mean, and and the 16 seeds have always won their their first, their um. Conference team around is their their first playing games they they've beaten mm. every year the first four, so it's just it's just something to look out for. I mean, HBCUs have actually done pretty decently in in the tournament. So, and well, say, we'll say just quickly before we transition, I I think Brandon, you know, to mention what he said, I think that just on based on regular season resume, I think that they are a weaker one seed. I think they showed a lot of vulnerability mid season where they were figuring stuff out. They lost obviously a ton of offensive production to the draft. Um, But having said all that, I think that particularly in this regional bracket, I think a lot of this does come down back down to coaching. And I just, Bill Self was a main man. I think that he's going to have no problem getting back to the final four. Well, isn't he, isn't he coming back from an injury, Bill Self? Because with Kansas, he's, he's, he just had a heart attack. So isn't he in the hospital? I, I think yeah, he got a stent and he, I think he's going to be all good to go there. So yeah, I read too. Yeah. All right, now that we've talked about March Madness, what do you guys who do you guys think is gonna be hired at Georgetown and uh and um and St. I think, John's? I, honestly, I, think, I think it's gonna come down what how the tournament goes. I think honestly. they're gonna hire Patino. That's why I, I I'm I'm sensing um Patino. Where do you think Pat- where do you think Patino's gonna go? You think he's gonna choose oh, I think Georgetown he's gonna go to St. or St. John's? He's gonna go to St. John's. I think uh, your better choice is St. John's. St. John's has a way better St. John's program. Better program. I, I think I think you Georgetown should hire uh Mike Bray from from Notre Dame or because of a Catholic background, it's a Catholic school too. Mm-hmm. Or look at uh Michael Shrewsbury from um Penn State. Georgetown is still in in that transitional period. Like I said, I think yeah, it was the right decision. I kind of like started to agree with it with firing, um, Pat uh Irwin. But I think like uh he still hadn't built rebuilt that program yet. I still think they weren't getting top recruits and players to help them make a run. All right, I'm gonna give you a huge name that uh, I never gonna happen, but I'm gonna throw this one out there. Watch out for Brad Stevens to take over for uh for coaching Georgetown. I know he's so in the you front think he'll come back to Celtics. the NBA to I, do if, that. for Georgetown. I would think I would I would pick Leave up the, the phone and call if I'm Georgetown. I'd pick up the phone and call definitely. I would look into hiring Brad Stevens. Like the, also I think look at he, who's taking over Syracuse. I, that's a good question too. I mean Brad Stevens. Brad Stevens could get his whatever coaching job he wants from college because he he has experience. I mean probably get paid. Would you argue he, he would get paid more because he's at the front office for um the Celtics right now? But he could probably almost make more at one of these big name schools than he would with the Celtics right now. Yeah, as, well, as yeah, because with that name, he carries he carries a lot of weight. And second of all, he he's you know every top recruit in the country in high school is gonna is really gonna look at because they State just I mean the Celtics just named um, Damon Sodmeyer, the coach the head, assistant head coach under the Boston Celtics got named got named because the coach for um, coach for Georgia Tech. So I don't know. I mean it. My only thing don't, is that the Celtics are have been killing it me. this this year in the NBA. I mean, they're killing still it. Still yeah, developing but like, there. It'd but be a like, hard job to just leave for. It's gonna be a hard job like to leave. That. I understand that, but if I'm one of those college teams, I'm picking up the phone. I'm calling him. Like, I, well, I, it's worth a call. Well, I got I gotta put I gotta push back a little bit. I think like 
Matt, I think it, it's very easy to like fall into like the love and the allure, but like there's really minimal job security in, in the pros. Whereas like when, when you go back to college and like, especially when you have tremendous success, like Brad Stevens did at Butler in college, like that, like you're a made man, you're like a local legend. And I think that he's probably missing a little bit of longing for that, you know? And it's like, there, there may be something there. I made, you know, kind of a similar equivalent kind of claim with Sean McVay going back to college as well, the coach, because he's a made man now he's won a championship and a lot of people would be wanting to, you know, flock and recruit to him um, if he did go back to college. But that's just my Seems instinct. Like he's rebuilding the Rams now, his next big project. Well, that's that's the thing is, does he want to stick around for that? He's got a whole life ahead of him in terms of coaching that he could kind of play with whatever he wants to do. We'll, we'll see if he do it again and, you know, to put a bow on the NFL there with Vic Vey and with Ramsey leaving and speculation of Aaron Donald retiring and – uh, questions at quarterback. Uh, it would make sense to try something else there or go to the booth, but we'll ultimately see how this free agency period goes. He's too, young, he's too young to go to the booth. I think he's got at least 25 more years of coaching in him. He's such <laughs> a guy. And he and he's a made man. Like, he's got a he, – his resume stacks up with everybody else. I think that if – you know, obviously it's not like an NFL commentary, but just to put a, a bow on it, I think that him and Brad Stevens have both kind of a similar – um, equivalency between the coaches there where they have full reign to go anywhere and be able to recruit anybody they want at the collegiate level. All right. He, good, excellent points there. Now let us get to your favorite question yes. that everybody asks. Who's your final four? Who's your final four? Who's your final four? So let us educate the masses and tell you all who are final four picks and national champion from there. I'll start. For me, coming out of the, for me coming out of the e, sorry, for me coming out of the South region, we're going to have Alabama as I mentioned, a complete team, a team that's hot, a team that is literally playing the heel around the country and having that momentum. And clearly, I think if this team would have been phased by the off the court issues towards the final few weeks of the season, it would have affected them. And they just keep winning. They know how to make comebacks. And they know to stay firm and strong. And I say watch out for them. On the other side of that, in the East, I actually see Marquette winning with their elite scoring and representing a great showing in the Big East. I think Marquette will be the one to get in the Final Four there. We have Houston coming out of... We have Houston coming out of the Midwest there with Midwest as a team that just knows how to stay firm and strong and even with the concern about their their um their injury their best player being hurt i think we've seen a strong bench and a well coached team that can keep them afloat in that region and i'm going to go with no bias aside the yukon huskies to come out of the west region i think they're uh, destined to win a win deep in the region I think what Brandon made clear, and it's true, despite losing in the Big East tournament, and they could have won that match if they just lost, but they've been improved mightily. They know how to. They know what it's like to be on top of the nation of the nation, and um, we've seen this team and this program come out of nowhere. They've won the national championship as an eight seed before, so this team I think is really good and impressive. And then I'm gonna give your national championship will be UConn coming out and I on will be coming out and they will defeat Houston there. They'll return to the national championship for the first time in nine <laughs> years. And they're going to play Alabama. So a Alabama UConn national championship, but I honestly am going with the villain. I'm going to go with the uh, Crimson Tide becoming your national champion and they're going to be like a – we'll go back to the wrestling, like an evil heel wrestling champion winning it all as long as their players stay on the court legally. And for health reasons-wise, I think uh, Bama is the team to beat national champions, Alabama for me. Wow. That that made my heart feel so warm. <laughs> going all the way to the national champions. God. God help I us. I really think this team this team's really good. This team is I mean, so, like team how is you guys good. so obsessed with UConn. You guys went to Hartford. It's not like a rival for you guys. <laughs> no, I mean, you know, I, no, I just think going has, on this stuff. Has, man, this team's good. Deep in the program. 
Yeah, and this team, this team has one with multiple head coaches. This team knows how to. I mean, you know, histor- on historically speaking, but and this team in particular, this team is well versed. They have lots of quad one victories. They've had a lot of close quad one. games. Oh yeah, no, they're a great and, team this year. I just, I, I just can't. Remember. <laughs> but they're a great team to come this year. Yeah, 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 that's, yeah, a, that's, yeah. A, that's a that's a that's a well, very reasonable pick. We'll go back to the. I mean, if we want to go with the like history of being on a UConn, we'll go back with the Ben Okafor, the uh, Ben Okafor, the Ben Gordon and Mecca Okafor days, and um, I just think this is a very good team that can make a deep run. And, Definitely, I I, uh, I agree with you on that from a basketball standpoint. I do. Yeah. So I'll that's give, what I go with there. I guess Alabama, I'll give my UConn. final four. Um, I like Houston coming out of the Midwest. That's probably the team I'll pick. Um, I actually, I, I'm with Alex on, on this one. I actually think Tennessee is going to come out of the, um, come out of the East and I'm, I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to take a crazy bet on this. I was considering going either Arizona or, or San Diego state, but I don't know. I just have a feeling San Diego state's going to come out of the South and then for the West, I'm going to take Kansas. So it's, I got okay. Houston, Kansas, and then I got San Diego state, Tennessee, and I have, uh, I have Tennessee playing Houston in the national championship and I've I've Houston winning it all this year. Okay. Okay. Wow. All right. Go, you up? All right, I'll go. I have Alabama out of the South. I have Purdue out of the East. The Midwest is gonna be Houston. And I have Yukon out of the West. Boy, you got three one seats. That's good. That's okay. <laughs> Plus you got mm-hmm. so Plus Bama Purdue sorry you're saying Bama Purdue, Yukon <laughs> and who? Uh, uh, Bama, Purdue, Houston, and UConn. I have sadly, being a UConn fan, losing to Houston. I think that Houston is just too strong of a defensive team, and I have Purdue beating Alabama on a whim because I also just love how Al- uh, how Purdue's played this year. I've been a big fan of Purdue and Zach Eady, and then I have uh Purdue going against Houston and Purdue taking the championship. Wow, you got a lot of confidence in freaking Purdue, man. Uh, I just, I, I, I love watching them play, man. They, they play I good basketball, that. and Zach Eady's just so impressive. That is like, I wish we can clone him. Well, we'll that have, could be what a, a definition center should be. We'll have a less Asian version of him, Donovan Klingon, in three yeah, years. Yeah, next year. Yep, yeah, in the next few years. Yep. All right, so. So I, I was wrestling with the South region, but uh, the more I thought about it, I'm going to take Baylor coming out of here. I just believe in Scott Drew as a coach. I think that they could really make a run. They're they're a hot team. They're an athletic team. Um, they've seen all the best competition in the Big 12 this year. I got Baylor. Uh, the East, I got Marquette coming out, similar to Matt. I think that they're the best team out of this um, out of this region. Um, the Midwest, I'm really hot on Texas. I love their coaching. I love their their senior guard play. I love everything that they bring to the table um, athletically as well. And out of the West, I think I – this is another tough one, but I do have Kansas coming out. Um, I wanted to go with my heart, but I had to be – Yeah, you're good. I had to keep it 100%. Um, I think that, you know, Bill Self, all things considered, as long as he's healthy, I think that, you know, they're going to win a lot of tight defensive lockdown games. I don't think they have, that, have the same scoring that they did in years past. Um, losing the top recruits they did, but um, this is a very big 12 top heavy uh, final four, but um, you know, all things considered, I have Texas taken the whole thing. So good pick. Can't, oh, okay. can't, can't, just, can't, uh, can't fight you on that one. It's, it's reasonable. Okay. All right. Wow. I really appreciate these are all different uh, final four matches or mostly very diverse there. And I'm really play. going on a limb with San Diego State with that pick. Yeah, you really are. Going on no, you they are. could easily you lose the college of Charleston. They look good. Like they could you know, easily I, lose I, the I college watched... of Charleston in the first round. As yeah, a, as exactly. A five like seed. they look good, but I don't know if they could beat Virginia, man. I'm, I'm gonna be honest with you. That's gonna be a tough match. Well, Hayden, you know, for the people who put uh, who went out on a limb for St. Peter's University, maybe you could have this same I... luck. I mean, I'm I'm a Mac fan, so you know, I, I if for for my heart, I'll put one bracket out of like the twenty I make that'll pick Iona. But you know, I'm not gonna <laughs> I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna put it on all of them. But I mean, for one, yeah, just to, to root for Iona. <laughs> we're gonna I have know. our we're gonna have our Doug we're gonna have our version of Dougie buckets. This year. I want to say Iona is New York's only team in the tournament this year, correct? 
if I'm, if I'm not mistaken. Like, I don't want to see from New York. I think, yeah. I no, don't oh, want to see from Marquette? New York. Marquette's in New York. Marquette's not from New York. Oh, no, Marquette's there was, I mean, Colgate's oh. from New York. If we're going to New oh, yeah, Colgate, State. yeah. Colgate, Colgate's Colgate, from New York. Colgate, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah so, you got, so you got two. Hold on. Oh, yeah, you got two teams. Colgate, Colgate, and I own it. Where's the make it. Buffalo didn't make it. Princeton's from New Jersey. Princeton's from New Jersey. I bet. Yeah, go Princeton, I guess, there. But all right, guys. This was as fun as it usually is, and even more. We will check in to preview the Sweet 16, and uh, let us enjoy this week of all of us loving college basketball. Alex Ranelio, Hayden Nadler, and Brandon Gutierrez, we will see you very soon.